Ever heard of D3? What about Chart.js? What about Victory? React charts, Tanstack charts. There's so many charting libraries, like way too many. Well, today there's one more. It's not your usual chart library. The same way that ShadCN isn't your usual UI library either. I'm so excited to share with you all today that ShadCN has finally shipped charts. Yes, ShadCN charts is now a real thing. I am so hyped. I've been waiting for this for a while. I am almost certain this is built on top of D3 or something like it, but I wanna dig in both into the code and how we use it. It's time, let's play with ShadCN charts. UI.ShadCN.com now has slash charts. And wow, just opening the page, the animations, I'm in. I wasn't gonna be too hard to convince because ShadCN stuff's always good, but uh, yeah, that was that was really good. <laughs> Let's let's give one of these a shot. Let's do the area chart. Look at how easy this is to get into your code base. I can just hit the copy button. We can go over to any shad code base. I'll make a new one just to showcase how easy this is to do. We'll go to docs, installation, next. Here's the command we got to run for it. Well, that's to create the project. We'll create our own project anyways. You know what? I'll copy this just to make it even faster. Copy with bun, paste, cool. Now we have a shad scene demo. Now I can copy this command, paste, default, slate, yes, cool. Now I have ShadCN set up. It's that easy. You run those two commands and now Shad is set up. It's not that ShadCN's a library. Make sure you check out my UI libraries or dead video if you haven't already. Shad does rely on a couple packages though, not ones they made, ones that you would probably be implementing if you built your own component library. Things like class variance authority, Lucid React, as well as certain accessibility tools that will get installed as we install more components. Let's go install the button, the classic, everyone's favorite. So we can copy the code or we can use the CLI. Click there, click bun, paste. And now we have the button added. And if I go to the code, we'll see that there's a new components library and this has this button TSX file. This is a pretty complex thing that I would never want to write myself because it does all the weird things you might want to do with a button while also making it a standard UI thing. And now I can go to any place I want to use this, like my page. We can delete all of the stuff here that we don't want. And in the middle here, button, it will import, hi, button. And now if I button dev, now I have a button. But we're not here for buttons. We're here for beautiful charts, not even charts, beautiful ones. So let's view the code. Can I scroll further? Do I just have to copy the code? Apparently it's using recharts. Interesting choice, not a bad one, but an interesting one for sure. It's also using the seed, which I think is already installed. Yeah, the seed reacts already installed. That's what they're using for animations, I'm pretty sure. We could also go to the docs and take a look at it this way. Probably the best bet. Yeah, beautiful charts, browse the charts library. They call out that they use recharts under the hood. Again, Shad CNs not sitting here pretending that they invented everything themselves. They just made really good starting points to make these things for your own applications. This is nice. They have different ones with icons. They have different ones with different data underneath. They have ones with gradients. I like the gradient. Let's start with that. So we can hit that or we can hit the copy code button. And now all we have to do to add this, go wherever you want to put it. We'll do components. Instead of UI, I'm going to do charts. In here, we'll make a gradient graph.tsx. Paste. Here we go. It looks like it's missing a couple of the other things that it's expecting us to use, specifically card and chart. We could probably install those. I'm surprised they don't show you how to do that here. But if we go back to the docs, they almost certainly will. Oh, you have to uh, add a chart first. That makes sense. Paste, enter, and now charts are added. So now I'm assuming it also installed card because that was a subdependency. Yep, UI now has card and chart, and I have charts, including my gradient graph. So nice. Export function component. This should not be named component. It's an annoying default, but we can name this gradient chart. And now in my page, I'll mount this instead. Paste, save, and look at that. Just by default, looks awesome already. But obviously, we can do a hell of a lot more with this. Super, super exciting. Let's actually look at the code. Because again, we just copy pasted the code. All the chart stuff, all the base stuff that we need to render the different types of charts all got included when we ran that NPM install. We can still customize it, but you probably don't want to customize it at that level. You want to customize it here, where we have the card that has the header with the title and things on top, like area chart, all that. I'll put in this little card utility. It doesn't have to be though. I can just change this to a div and then go to the bottom and close the div. Still works, just not in a card anymore. So again, fully customizable. I want to play with the actual data we're passing in though, because it has the linear gradients with the different stops, but how do we actually pass the points? Like where is the point data that it is using? 
Here it is. We have chart data. Where does this get passed in? Area chart data is just chart data. That looks very simple. Is it actually putting the months there? Interesting. It's smart enough to use month as a shorthand month. I don't know if it's just trimming to the first three letters. Let's try it. Jan Wario. Yeah, it's not actually that smart. And if I was to put like February and then January 2nd, yeah, it's just to in the first three letters. <laughs> Free formatting, but uh, not doing anything beyond that. But it's super easy to just pass data in. So if I wanted this to be randomized, pretty easy to do that too. Function gen random, I'll just say base number. Cool. I'm going to do math random plus 0.5 just to make the average of what we get here a little bit higher, so slightly bigger or smaller. And now if I go to all of these, paste. Now the desktop numbers are going to be randomized every time I open the page. Just not a big enough window for the random. I'm going to get rid of that. And now it'll be different every time. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? It's that easy to just do things with the data because it's just JavaScript. We don't have some crazy proprietary format. We're just passing whatever we want. And I bet we could even add our own custom keys. If I select all the instances of mobile, we'll do uh, Theo, and we'll make sure I'm always 999. Looks like that is not enough, but I'm sure if I specify the keys, yeah, all I have to do is add another one here. We'll do Theo. It will make the color pink. Let's see what else I have to do. Just the area. Probably just this. Just add to that. Will that do enough? Okay, that's just for the top level. So if we want that to also be filled, we'll have to copy paste the linear gradient for the fill, which is again pretty easy to do. Just change that. I guess the first one needs capital T, so fill Theo. We'll change those to both be Theo. And look at that. Now Theo's got those numbers really high up, right where they should be, and everything else is a little more chaotic. Good stuff. I like that it's that easy to just add things here. Would be nice if it was a little easier and I could put more config in that config object above rather than having to map these out. But you could programmatically do that too, because again, it's just React. If you don't want to have to specify the area for each of these manually, instead you can specify it above in a config object and then just map over it. Honestly, if you have a fixed number of data types, I would just hard code it. We've only played with one chart so far though, so let's go back, because again, the way that ChatCN works is we have these base components that are in your code base, but then you can build crazy things on top of them. They actually give really good examples of how to modify this stuff if you want to do it yourself. So you can define the chart data, you can define the chart config, and then pretty easy to render. They emphasize to make sure you set a minimum height value, otherwise it won't render because JavaScript and specifically CSS kind of suck. You can copy this. This is a nice simple bar chart, actually. This will be a better example. Let's move to this basic bar chart. Save, replace, and now I have a basic bar chart. It's that easy to get it rendering. Like all the code for that is here. We have some fake data. We have the config and we're just putting hashes for colors here. That easy. And now the basic bar chart just looks like that. You use the bar chart component, you wrap it with the chart container, you give it the config, and now I can just render bars and they render how you would expect. Isn't that nice, beautiful, and simple? But if all the charts were that simple, this wouldn't be useful. I wanna go through the crazy ones that they were showing on the page before. Some of these are nuts. There's so many useful types of charts in here. A negative bar chart that I can visualize going below and above. Activity bar chart, this one's obviously fake because Firefox is never the popular solution to much of anything. Interactive bar charts. Oh, the fact they have this working is nuts. It doesn't even have the bugs that the YouTube one has. That's so good. Oh, damn. I'm just curious about the code on this one. I have to see this quick. I'm so, so curious. What's it mad about? Oh, it's because it was named component before. I'm just going to leave it as component so I can keep playing with these things. Let's see it in our app first. Oh, oh, that just works. That's so good. That's so good. How bad is the code, though? Well, we got to use memo, so already already off to a painful start. How many lines is this? Only 219 lines for that, and half of it's the data? Like, if I delete the data, how much is left in this file? It's a 120-line file for all of that behavior. Are you kidding? That's nuts. Yeah, so we have the memoized data, and we are reducing to get the totals for both. So that's all this is used for, is for generating the totals because we have the ability to select an active section. I think it just shows the total anyways. Yeah, it does anyway. So that's just to put the totals on top and it's put in a use memo so it doesn't have to recalculate all the time. Meh, it's fake data. I would just do the math outside, but that's fair. For those curious what I mean by that, 
Here's what I mean by that. Const total equals there. Solved. No more memo needed. Since this isn't being passed unique data that changes, I don't care. We're just going to do that. Cool. Card, card header, yada, yada. R chart interactive, showing the total visitors for the last three months. So it makes sense. Oh, here they're doing the map thing I mentioned before, where we can map based on the different set of keys. Here, it's just letting you click the different ones to see just desktop or mobile. Really nice that it's that easy to do. And we have the active chart set as React state. We even use a custom key type here to make sure it's always a key of chart config. So it has to be one of those options, nice and dynamic. Then we have the chart content. We have the container and we have a bar chart, which is using chart data, but we're only going to render the one that we want to render right now. The bar, data key, active chart, because we're only going to put the one in here for the one that we currently have selected. And then the chart tooltip is super, super easy too. And this is all in the chart content, like parent component. So in here, we have the tooltip and the tooltip content has the class name for how wide it's supposed to be. It has a name key as well, but most importantly, has a label formatter because this is how it gets the value for whatever you currently have selected. It doesn't know much about it. So it's going to give you an any here. We know it will be a date though, because it's the label. It's the thing that we're using to say which part this is. So we're going to throw that through the new date. We're going to set it to locale string. And that's how we get the month, day and year all formatted properly there. And since we're passing this to label formatter, now when we hover over, that's going to be the label that we get on each of these things. Super nice. Also in the chart config, you can specify what you want the label for things to be, and then that gets persisted across. So since we're showing page views here, it uses the same terminology that it put there for the label for views. Super, super nice. And to specify what you want to show there, because in this case, we want to specify that we're showing the views on a given day. That's what the name key does. So I change this to desktop. It's going to get a little confused. because It's going to show the amount of desktop instances that happened. And now I change that back to views. Still going to be the same, but those are just different subsets of the chart data and different parts of the config. Makes sense. Kind of weird that you can put either of those there and it thinks it knows what it's doing, but good to know. And again, the code is super simple. It would be really cool if it was smart enough to know the type of the value being passed here. That's my biggest concern at the moment. But other than that, this is looking really good. What else do we have here, though? Because we've only played with a few. They have step line charts versus linear line charts multiple line charts, dots in the line charts, custom labels. This is actually very annoying. I was playing with a chart recently and I wanted to have labels like this. And the one library I found that did it okay was like cutting the labels off on the sides. Like if you had it slightly too big or too small, which I think we should actually test. What happens if I command plus a bunch? Look at that. The text is still visible, even though I zoomed in a whole bunch. That's not as easy as it might seem. One other fun thing they show here is that you can actually change the color and you have a color theme for the whole site and it gets honored across all of these automatically. Like the fact that it's just one click to entirely change the color scheme for all of these is hilarious. That's so good. We even touched on one of the most fun parts was that all of this works with the Vercel V0 AI. If you're not familiar with V0, first off, Vercel sponsors me. This isn't a sponsored video, but know that I'm biased inherently because of that. But if we go to edit in V0, we can use Vercel's tool for prompting to generate changes to a thing. So if I want to change this to have more points, let's say that uh, make the chart work for one year instead of six months. And now it is generating and it looks like the code it generated did not work. <laughs> As with all AI tools, not the most reliable thing in the world. And hopefully this helps emphasize to everybody watching that Vercel indeed did not pay for this video to be created. If we pick a simpler chart, something that, that has fewer things to go wrong, like the bar chart, and we give it a different instruction. Like in this case, maybe we want to change the colors. Change the color of the bars so it is different for every month. Let's see if it's smart enough to do that. <laughs> it tried its best. V0 is more of a search engine for the pre-made components, and I largely agree there. If you give V0 something a little more generic, like a website with bar charts comparing sentiments across four different options, this will actually be pretty smart. Still not great, but better. Use a line graph instead of bar charts. It's struggling a bit for sure. It's also funny because I made a thumbnail using basically this exact prompt recently. Okay, there we go. See? useful for that, minus the fact that this one overflows. I actually used this before 
to generate a chart way before we actually had the formal chart library. And I wanted to make sure I could use that for a thumbnail. You might recognize this from my sentiment video that I recently did. It was faster for me to use V0 to generate these charts and then change the logo and titles accordingly for each of the sections to make that thumbnail than it would have been for me to draw it out by hand. I tried. This was actually quite a bit faster and I got it done in like 10 minutes. And the combination of using something like V0 and like ShotCN and like a real purpose like a thumbnail. Sure, I'm not benefiting from the fancy animations and shit this stuff can do, but I can keep refreshing and get randomly generated new charts because as I showed earlier, the random stuff is really easy. So when you combine these tools together, you can make pretty good things really damn quickly. And I'm not saying that every piece of UI on the web should be generated with AI and ShadCN. I'm saying the ones that you don't feel like dealing with should be generated using tools like this because you can get them to a good point much faster. If you don't care enough to make it good, rely on someone else who did, like Shad. Because it's not just charts. As I've talked about in many another video, we have everything from accordions where you can click and it will break things down and in an accessible way, because again, all of this is relying on existing accessible primitives. Crazy things like menu bars or, of course, the classic breadcrumb, where you have the ability to navigate between different pages. And the new charts. I bet the new there is using their badge, almost certainly. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. You know, they take you from zero to 60 is a good way of phrasing it. They don't get you to 100, but they get you pretty damn close and they give you what you need to get the rest of the way there. And that's why I like it so much. Let me know what you guys think. Until next time, peace.